Hello, YouTube, and Happy Halloween! This video is a challenge from Mrs. Broken Terrain, my wife. She got me some dollar store decorations for Halloween and wanted to see what I could do with them. Well, baby, I'm going to accept your challenge. Just you wait and see. I've got one killer project in, in the works. So, let's get to it. But first, we gotta hear that drop. <laughs> This was an incredibly fun project. YouTube, challenge yourself, or get your wife or husband, girlfriend or boyfriend to challenge you. Get outside your comfort zone and have some crazy fun with some crafting. Here I am with the, uh, the dollar store skeletons. You can see I got rid of that spider real quick. Uh, dollar store, I don't think that's how spiders work. Skeleton wise, right? <laughs> but I decided to stick with the bat and the rat, and I'm gonna combine the two of them. Um, my playing around gave me a rough idea. Wouldn't it be cool if the two skeletons were combined into the skeletal remains of a massive, titanic sized dragon? I loved it. Um, but I needed some way to display the, the dragon's corpse, the skeleton. And I thought, wouldn't it be cool if I did a mountain with a path winding all the way around the mountain and the skeleton was draped over it. So that's what I was going with, YouTube. And I got right to work. Here you can see I'm carving out the last of my two inch foam. And I've got different levels, and I've drawn out a path that goes around. And here's my rough idea. The dragon will sit, oh, something like that. <laughs> With my Sharpie, I'm gonna draw out the sloping and winding path. And that's just going to make sure I don't uh, cut something I don't want to cut. And then with a combination craft knife and X-Acto, I'm going to get all that extra foam out of the way and create my path for all of the foam pieces. The cutting on these pieces took uh, a lot of time, but that's okay. Take your time. Don't cut yourself and work your way through the foam slowly. You will get there. I'm pretty pleased with how it's turning out. So it's time to hot glue the pieces together starting with the bottom of the trail and working my way up. You can see I've missed a, a little bit of the walkway there, but I'll add a, uh, a scrap piece to finish out the look uh, once everything's put together. So no harm, no foul. And you can see the path's already working out. I'll fill that out with a piece. I'll even out the slope right there and then the path comes all the way up to this incredible platform at the top, which we're gonna use for our big bad or story elements, whatever uh, really cool idea you have for your story, your campaign, your players, it's gonna take place all the way up at the top on this very top platform. So I wanted it to be uh, a large enough space for some fighting and some story to, to happen upon it. Once everything's together, I'm gonna go back and get my rough texture in 
similar to the texture I applied to my modular cliffs. You'll see a link up above if you want a uh, detailed explanation on how I get this texture for my mountain type areas. And then I'm gonna test fit my skeleton. You can see I've got an idea on what I'm looking to do, uh, but we still got more work to go. Don't forget tin foil, tin foil, tin foil, tin foil. Get that texture all over this mountain. Uh, this took a while just because of the size of the project, but it's always worth it. Texture is always worth the extra time. Uh, now I turn to my dollar store foam core, foam, uh, foam board, and I start with the paper removed from both sides, I start creating my tiles to pave the trail or the path up the mountain. I start by doing some uh, half inch by half inch squares, and then I go in and do half inch by quarter inch strip type bricks and then I do quarter inch by quarter inch square bricks. And I'm gonna use these three different sizes to apply and, and create this really cool looking paved brick path up the trail. And uh, you'll see I've got some time-lapse shots of me actually laying the brick work out. I start with some white PVA Put a healthy dose on there. I'll use a scrap piece of foam to squeegee a nice flat area of, of even glue. And then it's just applying brick. But these three shapes and sizes work really well together. And with just a little bit of uh, thought and planning, you can create a really cool randomized type of path with these three different sized bricks that are it's just going to look amazing when it's painted Although laying the brickwork was very time consuming, it was incredibly fun. And uh, when I was done with the process, I was racking my brain for more projects where I could lay little bricks like this. It was so much fun. Um, if you're considering trying a project like this, uh, or maybe doing some miniature brickwork, I highly recommend it. It's a blast. And when it's done, it just looks amazing. Uh, I'm not going to bore you with all of the video, so we fast forward to the top. I reached the top, and when I got to this very top part, you see I planned on doing uh, brickwork all the way up, but realized it was way too steep. Um, remember, I love to make everything super playable. I mean, what's the point if you can't play on it? And so I decided I was going to switch gears and do some steps. So using those same pieces, I put together some uh, stairs or some steps and I glue those in place. I'm really glad I went this route. The stairs are um, an incredibly interesting visual when you get to the top, and it only serves to separate that very top casting platform even more so from the rest of the mountain. And uh, that's what you want. You want tons of visual interest in a piece like this. This is not a piece to be blended in 
you want this thing to jump out and scream at the players when it hits the table. Uh, now that I've gotten to the very, very top of the casting platform, I wanted to do a little something different, and I thought uh, a casting uh, spot on the platform would be really cool. I had this really cool bead um, with this really neat design, and I thought, man, this is the perfect chance to utilize this bead. And so I did uh, a few rings of stone. Uh, I uh, set them up so that the the mortar line was every other brick. I thought I could paint these in a very interesting way uh, when it's time to paint. But short of that, it was time to just lay a bunch of brick around the circle. So here we go. Here's some glamour shots of all the brickwork done. The two-tone foam white on the blue is pretty cool. And there's that casting platform all finished. I'll go back in and trim some of the overhang pieces uh, a little later once the glue dries. And now it's time to flock with some of the crafting sand. I just dropped some glue in some of the really bad cracks uh, this is how I hide a lot of my mistakes. Once the flocking dries, I grab my dollar store decorations, the star of the project, and I'm going to get back to work on getting a dragon out of this rat and bat. I didn't like this cheap looking sternum. And I thought it'd be much cooler if I had these ribs just kind of hanging down. So I trim the sternum out and then using these snips, I'm going to kind of shape the edge of the rib, uh, the ribs so they're a bit more pointy and look a little more rib-like. Cut the tail because of a, uh, the weird bend and this way I can have it go straight down. And I remove these back legs a bit so that I can better shape and mold this skeleton to the shape of my mountain. Once I find the, uh, like a, a pose I like, um, and it wasn't particularly easy. I'd have to torque on some of these uh, plastic pieces really bend them into shape so that they can lend themselves to this project. Um, but uh, once once I got them into a, a shape I liked and that fit the mountain, I really, really started 
to get excited. Uh, glue the back legs back on in place. I had wanted the whole path to be playable, but I thought, man, I can just make them do a dexterity roll or athletics roll to uh, get around that leg. Um, that might be kind of cool, a little more gameplay to the actual terrain. And then these wings from the bat, uh, I love them, but I thought they worked better if I cut that little uh, shoulder piece off. They, they fit better with how I wanted them. Uh, I really need, these wings really needed a two point glue. Uh, obviously they're glued to the skeleton, but I set it up so that the tips of the wings could be glued to the platform. Like the dragon was climbing up to the platform when it died. And then along the spine, I've cut out just from some cardstock, some little, uh, little spikes just to make it a bit more dragon-esque. Uh, I also cut some horns out of the foam and glued those on as well. And then I wanted to do one more thing before I started painting and that was to create this old uh, iron uh, fence, fencing at the top of this casting platform. So using those plastic tubing Q-tips, you can find those at the dollar store. I'm sure they're in other locations as well. I uh, buried them in to the depth I liked. You can see I've got my mini for scale there. And once all those get glued into place, I'm going to use these uh, jeweler little eye rings. I've used them for handles on doors before and in this particular instance I'm going to use them as eyelets to hold the chain in place. And boy it worked amazingly. This was a, a great great idea. Now with my chain I'm going to feed this through. You won't actually see it because in order to feed it through all those tiny holes I had to turn the thing up on its side and it just couldn't get a good view. But I did get it done. And then it was time to base all the foam in the Black Magic Craft base coat. 50% Mod Podge, 50% acrylic black paint. And then I took it outside and I hit it with a gray primer. I'm gonna use burnt sienna and khaki with a makeup sponge. And I'm just gonna hit all of that raw mountain stonework with this two-tone color. Uh, and this works great with this gray primer and this two-tone look. I'm hoping it's going to match my cliff project from earlier. I'll place a link above. If you haven't checked out my cliffs, please do. They're a very, very useful piece of terrain. You will find yourself using them all the time. Turn back to my granite gray. I'm just going to lay a base coat uh, down for the entire uh, stone walkway and platform. Then with Arcana's buttermilk, I'm gonna go and paint the entire dragon skeleton. And this was a pain in the butt. Um, in hindsight, I probably should have done the mountain and the walkway first, and then added the dragon to it. Uh, but hey, I like to do things the hard way sometimes. Once all of that had dried, it was time to go back in, and um, I really liked the way it turned out in my modular magnetic terrain video. I'm going to put a link for that one above. Boy, if you haven't seen that one, YouTube, I highly recommend it. Back to this project. I'm going to color these bricks in different colors along the walkway. Colors similar to the, well, I'm going to use the burnt sienna and the khaki uh, so that I can bring those colors of the mountain into the colors of the stone walkway. It's almost as if the makers of this walkway 
actually used the stone carved from the mountain. It ends up looking really good. And here's a beauty shot of the whole thing done with the different colors. Then I'm going to hit all that raw, rough stone work of the mountain with a dry brushing or a heavy dry brushing of the granite gray. So it's going to tie it in even more with our walkway and make everything look like a solid, cohesive piece. Finally, with some gunmetal gray, I'm going to hit those iron posts and the chain. And then it's on to some more flocking. I'm going to hit these flat areas with the, the green grassy flock that I so often use. Uh, this was another reason I probably should have done the mountain first and then added the dragon. This was a miserable experience trying to flock around that dragon, but eventually I got it. Um, and then it was just time to go crazy with that green flocking. All the cracks and crevices and crannies of the mountain, I stuck the green flocking in what I felt was a realistic looking manner and even in between some of the tiles and some of the larger spaces. And then I'll go back over where the craft sand was and add some flocking down just to hide all kinds of mistakes and maybe some things that I didn't quite like the way it looked. However, in, in this video, oh yeah, I did, <laughs> I flocked the heck out of that dragon too. I did not um, catch any of that on video. I stopped filming and then kept flocking and went crazy with it. Uh, so I apologize for missing that uh, video opportunity, YouTube, but uh, hopefully you forgive me. This video is already long enough, right? And if you're still here, thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, then it was time to hit the whole darn thing with my homemade black wash. Yes, it's still a little too dark, but I'm starting to really, really like it. And when I was laying it down on the stone and the dragon, man, oh, it looked so good. I love it. YouTube. YouTube, I love it. But, like I said... A little too dark so it was time to go back in with a very light dry brush of granite gray let's get all those raised details and edges popping again this time I hit the, the brick with a little highlight as well Then I go in with that same buttermilk and I hit all the raised areas on the dragon's skeleton. Uh, I'm particularly satisfied with the skull. Oh my goodness, as soon as you dry brush that skull, all the details begin to pop. At this point, I knew, I knew that I had aced this challenge from my wife. And I was super excited to share it, not only with her, but all of you, YouTube, I couldn't wait to get this video done. And I got so excited that I decided to make my own static grass, which is a different kind of blocking out of some craft rope. There's a couple of my test pieces. It worked really well. 
and I thought now is the time let's go crazy so some white PVA let's mix it about and we're gonna put this uh, flock down on some of the uh, other flocked spots this was a fun experiment I think it uh, it wasn't completely successful just because of all the strange spots to put all that flock in but um, it did work it does look good and I'm pretty happy and now I have a whole bottle of some static grass flock to try on new projects and because I was so in love with this project I'm like I gotta I gotta add some more so I busted out my Citadel skulls uh, a, a great piece of uh, a great thing to have for anybody who loves to make terrain if you want to add some skulls you just bust open this box pick a few there's some demons there's some orcs there's some humans and i just littered this thing with skulls and then i grabbed my rust effect paint army army painters rust effect and i rusted up those iron uh that iron fence that iron chain gate at the top of my casting platform. And this is gonna be the last step. YouTube, this was it. And now, let's walk to the top of Dragon Top Mountain. The winding path, the skulls scaring away any wary travelers pass under the bony tail and through the bony leg and you come to the stairs of the casting platform you can feel the power radiating from the magical keystone behold dragon top mountain youtube i love it i love how it turned out and look at with those cliffs stacked even higher this thing is enormous here we see Tinley and the Shamrock Boys storming to the top of Dragon Top Mountain. But the orcs are in their way. Why? Why do the orcs impede their progress? Who stands atop the mountain preparing to cast an incredible spell of great apocalyptic power? <laughs> I love it. Happy Halloween, YouTube. Like each other. Love each other. Craft on. Don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe, and I'll see you next time.